What up, fishes? Welcome back to the channel. Chef David Buadana here, and today we're going to be going through bluefin tuna and the rainbow of red the species offers. We're going to go through lean to fatty and everything in between. Stay tuned for some sushi tuna flight. Blue fin tuna. Where is it? Where does it come from? Why is it so expensive? What other kinds of tunas are there? Well, in the sushi world, we predominantly use four kinds of tuna. There's an array of tuna out there, but the four kinds that we stick to are albacore, which you've seen in a can. Other one is going to be yellow fin, which you'll see usually at a sports bar when you get the tuna tataki, that's gonna be yellow fin. Then there's gonna be big eye, which is not very commonly used. Usually in French, Italian, other high-end cuisines, you'll see it popping in and out. A Little bit sushi, more in Japan they use a lot of it, around here, depends. And the fourth kind of tuna, the highly regarded blue fin tuna. Blue fin tuna, gets approximately up to a thousand pounds in its heyday. You can go fishing off a of Montauk in the 80s and you would catch one. Now it's declined, but there's plenty of ways that technology has helped raise them. This is the bluefin tuna that I sliced in my other video. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's breaking down bluefin tuna or how to cut bluefin tuna. This episode, we're gonna go all the way in depth to the finished product and the examples of everything from the lean tuna, which is called the Akami, to the fatty tuna, which is Toro. So for all you tuna geeks out there, this is gonna be a fun one. I really wanna explain to you the different kinds of cuts and somewhat similar to beef, how there is a prize piece like filet mignon, there's going to be the Toro, which is comparable as far as quality, desirable, and fattiness to the piece. Um, tuna, bluefin tuna, excuse me, is the only tuna that produces the akami, the chutoro, otoro, kamatoro, and various other parts. So as you can see here in this rainbow red, I'm gonna explain all the pieces. If you've been to a sushi bar, a high-end sushi bar, and you had omakase, usually there's gonna be three to five pieces of tuna in there. And it's interesting to know that all that tuna came from the same fish, the bluefin tuna. And frankly, it is the best. It is amazing taste. It is truly a remarkable species. Make sure you check out that other video of this massive thing that weighs more than me. And today's fish, which is that fish from before, was 500 or 455 pounds, something in that genre. Starting from your left, we have Akami, which is going to be the lean tuna on the backside. You can refer to the diagram, what I mean by backside, top loin. This is gonna have no fat or at least very little fat compared to the rest of the pieces we're gonna use. Akami has all the power, the protein, that nice, really tuna taste. Chutoro, medium fatty tuna, the kanji chutoro, it really means the middle fat. Red to pink, you can see it here, red to pink. Beautiful gradation of colors. One of the most sought after pieces in the bluefin tuna family because it's most rare because not much of the tuna yields this unique piece where it embodies both of the otoro and the akami. So the Japanese favor this one very much because it's not too fatty and it still has a little bit taste of the lean. Here is the otoro, which means the big, the fatty. This is gonna be all that beautiful marbled fat right there. A few nice little tendons. We're gonna bust right through those easily. Just very fatty, gushy, chewy, coats the mouth, lots of oil. Over here we have the Kama Toro, which is going to be the jaw. What you can see, it's marbled almost like Kobe beef, where it's kind of a controlled chaos, but the marbleization or the marbling, excuse me, is everywhere. Marbleization is a cool word, I made it up. But you can see the marbling here is really, really just like, woo! Like, wow, look at that. It's like Kobe beef. And then over here, this is a miscellaneous piece because on the other side of it, you can see 
not very pretty. That's actually where the skin is, right over here. So this is a miscellaneous piece. I'm gonna teach you how I get some really cool chop tour out of that. And we're gonna go all through the rainbow. Time to start slicing. Tuna flight about to take off. So fasten those seat belts. Next, we're gonna do is gonna be the Otoro. Uh, before I start cutting it up, I want you to notice a few things. There's going to be some of the uh, tendons. So these are very, uh, very predominant in sushi. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and these are what is a little bit chewy. So we have to make sure we cut against the grain. There's a few ways of doing that. Uh, each chef has their own philosophy on how they were taught. I'm gonna show you how I do it. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is gonna remove the two top and bottom parts of this uh, kind of inner skin lining, because we don't want to eat that. So we're just gonna go right here. And this we can scrape off any little bit of meat left. Comes right off. Now the trick is not to cut with the fibers because then it kind of falls apart and also it can be very chewy. So what we want to do is we want to cut against the fibers. Now there's a few ways to cut it, right through here, or I can come around the other side. I like this side better because this is the way it's pulling. As you can see how if I push it, it's going that way. So when I drag my knife, it's going to kind of come with it. The next piece is everybody's favorite. It's the Kama Toro. Kama, 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 Chameleon. Come and go. Four seconds, music rights. So yes, the Kama Toro, which is the jaw, it is the most highly sought out after by all the humanoids in the world. And the bluefin tuna is the only one that has this. And what am I talking about? Talking about this baby. Slice that off. This one is beautiful, easy to slice. Chef's favorite, customer's favorite. Get an entry point ready. Next piece we're gonna do is, looks beautiful to the eye, and when I turn it over, does not look beautiful to the eye. Why am I holding a golden spoon? Because I bought it on Amazon. And I'm gonna use this to get out all the goodness. So, bring your attention down below. Not that low, bring it back up, bring it back up now. <laughs> all right, bring it back down. <laughs> So as you can see here, very beautiful, kind of like a uh, Kama Toro, almost uh, O Toro. Only problem is, this is at the bottom of the belly and right by the skin. And you can see here, this is not the desirable piece. We can slice it, but rather than slicing it, I'm gonna use my spoon and I'm gonna get out some of this goodness and see what's available. So all I'm gonna do, let me go towards you guys, and you wanna scrape with the tendons. You don't wanna go against the tendons, you're gonna break them, you're gonna pull them out. So you wanna kind of just go in there, and just see what we get. That's it, you can kind of get in there a little bit. It's not too much, see? That's why it looked good to the eye, but it wasn't that yummy. 
And now we're getting some of that beautiful Toro. All right, I can go a little more on that. I'll do it afterwards. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. The biscuit? No? Come on, guys. Do it with it. Namaste. We're back. All right, if you heard me say before, uh, on the Saku, before I started cutting it, I said make an entry point. So therefore, my netta can follow that same line, and I get evenly sized pieces throughout the entire block or the saku. Now that entrance point, here's the entrance point I, I didn't utilize well. There's a chu toro, there's that kama toro, a little bit more of that chu toro, and then that o toro. Now these are all pieces that usually customers say, oh chef, what are you gonna do with these pieces? Well, here's what you actually do with it. You can just bam, 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 break through them. And then you can put it all together, and this is where you get some beautiful chopped toro. Beautiful. And now I know it didn't look too pretty, but that's the way, you know, that's where fish and food comes from. Um, we're gonna just load it up onto a nice little plate here with some plastic. Now this chopped toro, you want this beautiful pink, a little bit of red like that. That's really good fatty tuna. And the reason why I put plastic on the bottom is I'll show you why. So I can wrap it up here. One, two, and I'm gonna put it here. And so my fingers, because your oil, your hands will change the temperature right away and it will turn black immediately. Also, if it's stacked, it will start turning colors very quickly. So what I can do is I can just spread it nice and thin like that without really messing up the oils and running my hands through it too much. And then when I pull back out and I'm gonna serve you sushi sh shortly on the camera, it looks presentable. So that goes into the fridge. Chopped Toro is now ready for the hand roll that you usually order at the end of the meal or part of the meal. We're gonna make the akami. We're gonna do a thing called zuke, uh, which means literally just marinate. Zuke, Z-U-K-E. Z -U -K -E. Uh, it's gonna be called when they serve it. It's like, oh, this is tuna, zuke. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the tuna, we're gonna blanch it in boiling water for about less than 10 seconds, and we're gonna put it into ice water and then into my soy marinated, my zuke marinate recipe. And that's about it. You see how fast that cooks me outside. All right, the akami has uh, been bland for 10 seconds and in the ice water for about 30 seconds, no more than that. You just wanna stop that cooking. And when I slice into it, it's gonna have this beautiful, lightly seared rim, and it's gonna be ruby red on the inside. But before we do that, we're gonna pat it dry. And this is my zuke recipe. Uh, every chef has it, it's pretty simple, like a, just a uh, soy sauce, mir and sake ratio. You can put a little smoked bonito flakes in there. Each chef has their own way of how they want that marinated tuna, that zuke tuna to taste. Mine's pretty simple, just, uh, you know, deliciousness. Take the tuna, and that's it. Let it get in there, and let it marinate away. Woo! Ain't nobody got that doom, doom, doom. Ain't nobody, yeah, 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 yeah. Ain't nobody got your man. Is that Shaka Khan? Yeah, Shaka Khan. I don't know the words, but. It's a Zuke song. Sorry, I get excited when I marinate my fish. All right, and then I put them in the fridge and we'll pull it out later for some Hollywood magic. Time to check the zuke, the marinated tuna, the akami piece we blanched. This is already uh, six hours. Welcome to Hollywood magic. Uh, some chefs do six hours, 12 hours overnight. Depends on what you want to do. Also, this one, we won't be wiping soy sauce on top of it afterwards because it's been marinating in soy, but we can actually use this soy. And, and this soy actually is um, delicious because now it's infused with tuna. All right, so let's see what we got here. Mm. 
just gonna pat it down for video purposes. I don't wanna make a mess, but you do wanna retain as much as that moisture and soy. Let's see what we got inside. Gonna make the entry point, but I won't be able to use it for the chopped toro because it's gonna have already seasoning and blanched. It's gonna look weird. Brown stuff is in your tuna. All right, entrance point right here. And now we're gonna make some netta. This is going to be the uh, zuke, the marinated tuna, the akame, the backside. You see that nice little seared ring, and that's going to allow it to absorb that flavor from the marination that we did before. Uh, this one at a sushi bar is very popular. You can ask for it, request it, see if they have it. It's just one way, many of the one of the various ways to be eating the lean tuna, the akame. Now, it doesn't look like much what I did, but once I make the sushi, you're gonna see what happens. So this is gonna be the akami. This is just a lean tuna, backside, no fat. And what I did is I scored, I did one slice here, then this one I did two slices, and this one I did a few. Um, this is for different reasons, depends on how the chef cuts the netta, how he wants it to fold over, and also to hold the soy sauce. So as you can see, I'm gonna brush the soy sauce on each one, and you'll see how it kind of retains it. All right, on to the chew toro, the medium fatty tuna. And before I make the nigiri out of it, I wanna show you again that red to pink contrast. So you can really see it. You can see that red to pink. Absolutely stunning, textbook, picture perfect chew toro. That is gorgeous chutoro. And now you really can see that red to pink. And you want to just give it a little dab of soy sauce, not much. It's just so good. You don't want to do anything to it. It's just so perfect. Take a moment for yourself. Take five. <sighs> this guy. Chutoro. That's it. I don't know. <laughs> chutoro, it's so good. Not Jew Toro, nice word pun there. I got soy sauce in my eye. Ay, Jew Toro! Okay, next one's gonna be Kama Toro. Now this one is a little thicker, it's almost like beef. So I'm gonna have also score it as well.
it with some of the soy here. Ooh. This last one, I'm gonna sear it actually. I'm gonna show you something cool with it. So there we go. Kamal Toro, glistening. All right, on to the beautiful Chop Toro that is presentable to the customers. And don't forget, this was all the starting points and pieces, uh, that miscellaneous piece of tuna that I couldn't really use for sushi. But now I got this beautiful pink chopped toro. So I can do various things with it. I can do a hand roll, but for the sushi world, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little gunkan, which is a battleship sushi. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mold this piece here to a little kind of thing like that, a little cube. Take my seaweed, wrap it around. Take some of my beautiful spoon here, and we're gonna scrape up some of that toro, and we can just put it right into there, and we can garnish that with whatever makes you happy. And then now you got some beautiful chopped toro little tuna pieces. All right, we scored some of the other ones, and that technique is used for different reasons. Uh, this time, I'm just gonna do a light. I'm gonna hit it once or twice on these tenons, the opposite direction. Just kind of break them up a little bit. And this is the piece that most of the time we do aburi, which is um, we do searing. So we're gonna sear this just because it's gonna help shrink those muscles, those fibers, and also extract some of the fat. And you can see how it just kind of falls off those tendons there, just kind of just falling off. And when I apply some heat to that right there, that's gonna shrink immediately. Let's get that going. Bum, 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 bum. Ah, yeah, gotta get that rhythm. This is the rhythm of the night. Oh my, yeah. One technique, what we do is we use the hand torch, and the other technique we do is going to be the bincho, which is going to be the charcoal. So I'm gonna show you a prime example. I'm gonna remove one of these here. So what I want you to do is keep an eye out right here. I'm gonna bring the heat in slowly so you'll see how fast this tendon reacts to heat. It's gone, that's how fast. And that's all we want to do, just a light touch. It's very sensitive, this fish. Some fish we can do a little longer. And that's what Old Toro is all about, that fatty, fatty tuna. My fingers are covered in oil, the plate is covered in oil. That's what you want to see, kind of brings it out. That aburi extracts the fat, also sears the tendons. This one we can put truffle salt on, a little pepper, we can put soy sauce, ponzu, scallions, chives. This is the best, one of the highly sought out favorite pieces. Bichotan. The tuna flight was a success, baby. Rainbow of red from the lean Akami tuna to the fatty boom baddie Kamatoro. We did it. I'm excited to break it down for you. Now I need you to eat it. Uh, but before we do that, before we do that, we must ring the bell. We subscribe and we definitely give a thumbs up because the tuna flight is airborne.